All righty. Uh, Alf, what, what have you got next for us? Okay, so this is the last of my big exciting articles <laughs> this week, and I apologize in advance because this is some, this is as close to incredibly sexy as physics ever gets, <laughs> and this is some seriously detailed stuff. Mm. I'm going to go through it quickly, and I am not an expert. I just like to make that perfectly clear. I will stick up links to some good articles if you want to know more about it, though. This is yet another article in Nature, and I'm sorry for all my Nature picks this week, but these are just amazing. They are quite cool. So, published in Nature uh, is an article uh, called Observation of the Dynamical Casimir Effect in a Superconducting Circuit. <laughs> now, what is the Casimir Effect? I hear you ask we, we're crying <laughs> throughout <it>. cyberspace. <laughs> so, the Casimir Effect is one of the effects of the quantum nature of space. So when we started de de developing the ideas between, uh, uh, behind quantum physics um, almost 100 years ago now, one of the fundamental ones that came out of it was this idea of uncertainty. It's that if you look at anything close enough up, and we're talking about Site kind of times 10 to the minus 32, 33 uh, meters here. So incredibly small quantities, incredibly small sizes, that everything actually comes in packets. Um, so you can say that and uh, this, this idea of uncertainty is that once you start getting down to the scale, you cannot, there's a limit to the certainty that you can have on any single effect. One of the consequences of this uh, that we realized uh, a decade or so later is this idea of quantum field theory. And this comes about when you try and imagine a vacuum. So when, when we think about a vacuum in physics, we're not talking about a vacuum like the, the kind that is really good at cleaning your carpet. We're not even talking about the kind that you get in space because space is just a very, very, very sparsely populated vacuum. Mm. So. When we talk about a vacuum, we're talking about a perfect vacuum, the complete absence of anything other than space. And when you start putting quantum mechanics into that, you get something exceedingly weird. Because of this inherent uncertainty, it means that you can't say to any certainty whether or not there are particles there or not. Mm -hmm. And so the idea behind quantum mechanics is that because you can't say it, what we think of is that there are particles coming into being and disappearing again. But because they uh, come into being in terms of uh, in particle-antiparticle pairs and they recombine and vanish before we have time to detect them, that most of the time we can't detect them. I know this sounds all airy-fairy, but this has actually been shown to have some real-world effects, and one of them is this Casimir effect. So the Casimir effect is what happens when you get two perfectly conducting, or reasonably well conducting, uh, metal plates, and you stick them very, very close together. If you think about this in terms of uh, normal physics, you wouldn't expect anything to happen, because there's no charge on the plates, there's no, uh, there's very, very limited gravity pulling the two together, a tiny, infinitesimal amount, and there's just no other forces that you'd expect. It. But if you do that experiment, you find a force that actually tries to pull these two plates together. And the reason it does that is because of this quantum mechanical effect. So it changes the properties of what particles can and can't form stably between the plates as opposed to outside the plates. And this causes a, a quantum pressure, if you like, that pushes the plates together. And that's what we experience and can actually measure as a force. Mm. So this is well, this was first experimentally measured. And this has to be like a really, really perfect vacuum to measure this. And the plates have to be a ridiculously small distance apart, about 10 nanometers or so for really good measurements. Um, this was actually experimentally measured for the first time in 2001. So that's all very well and good. It turns out that our universe is actually completely and utterly chaotic <laughs> on the smallest length scales and that there are real world effects. But this is not what they measured. The Casimir effect has another weird consequence. And that is, if you start speeding those plates up, if you accelerate them to very close to the speed of light, it changes things again. And so the strength of that Casimir effect is expected to change. Now, I don't know if anyone's actually tried to accelerate a metal plate to near the speed of light, but it's pretty damn hard. Um, so what these researchers actually did is they got a superconductor and they essentially mimicked uh, a plate moving at an incredibly fast speed, a significant fraction of the speed of light. Ah. And they did that by uh, changing the 
uh, the electric properties of the superconductor. So they changed the electrical length of the superconductor, which is uh, the region in the superconductor that uh, w through which current is actually passed. And they changed this at a ridiculously high frequency, which means that it, which means that it was fluctuating at almost the speed of light. So this, you can kind of think of this as fooling those uh, particles, those anti-particle particle pairs that are, are appearing and disappearing between the plates. It fools them into almost seeing that they're moving at a, a fraction of the speed of light. And this changes those particles, and it means that some of those particles cease to be virtual particles. They actually get reflected out and turn into real photons, <laughs> real bits of light, and this is what these guys did. Now this is ridiculously hard. For this to work, you have to have a perfect vacuum. It has to be incredibly cold, so it has to be within 50 millikelvins of absolute zero. So this is ridiculously small temperatures so you don't get thermal effects. Um, and you have to be using uh, a superconductor. <laughs> and they managed to detect this within um so, so this has been suggested before but nowhere has it been shown to work and this is just an incredibly delicate experimental setup measuring something that has profound implications for our understanding of the entire universe by the way for those of you that have heard of hawking radiation i was gonna say it sounds just like hawking radiation it is, but it's hawking radiation that doesn't occur next to a black hmm. hole. It's hawking radiation that occurs right here on Earth that we can detect. That's fantastic. And that is cool. That is so fantastic because, yeah, it's a little bit tricky to measure hawking radiation um, and, and, and watch it as it happens. Oh, this is, and this is just this is just amazing. The amount of time and effort that's gone into this and the implications of this experiment are just so stunning. Stunning. If you don't understand it, don't worry. I probably didn't explain it very well, and it is incredibly, incredibly complicated. Um, but it's beautiful. That paper is absolutely magnificent. Wow. Well, well done. Um, and yes, interesting thing um, for for people who are not familiar with Hawking radiation, <coughs> we made mention of it a podcast or two ago when we were talking about lasers that were going to be ripping a um, a new hole in space time, which just sounds like nothing can go wrong. Um, <laughs> at all. Uh, well, if there are faster than light neutrinos, then... <laughs> well, then it's fine, yeah. Um, and talked about how Hawking radiation um, can lead to the evaporation of black holes. So there's a whole bunch of really interesting stuff that goes on there um, on the sort of subatomic scale, as it were. Go go and have a look. We will link to all of this, right, Elf? Uh, yes, we will link to all of it indeed. Fantastic. Um, links can be found on cyblogs.co.nz forward slash TOSP. Uh, TOSP standing, of course, for the official Cyblogs podcast. Sorry to interrupt, Alf. Back to you. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. That's that's all I had to say. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that because I will just screw things up. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> relativity, quantum mechanics, and um, things moving almost the speed of light are... It's physics porn. Uh, Yes, absolutely. Pretty much. Um, alrighty. Well, before before we end off, then I uh, I think you rem well I think I remember you telling me you had one more little announcement about one of our bloggers, Anna Sandiford. I have indeed. So Anna Sandiford blogs on the Forensic Scientist blog because unsurprisingly she is a forensic scientist. And we've just heard, as of about an hour ago, that she has won the Science Teller 2011 Best Science Story Competition. Congratulations. She's rather excited about this and uh, what, um, what she's decided to do to celebrate it is to actually publish a, an excerpt from her recent book up on Cyblogs. So go and have a look at this. Uh, the post is entitled Death, Destruction, Science, and it is about forensic science, and it's great. It's really entertaining to read, and it is um, oh, it's just interesting and informative and entertaining at the same time. It's everything that a decent story needs. Wow. Congratulations again, Anna. That's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> Um, I believe that that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, am I correct, Alf? You are correct indeed. There are all sorts of interesting things going on this week, including, um, shameless self-plug, uh, Café Scientifique. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if you want to find out more about them, uh, have a look at the Cyblogs, uh, sorry, the Science Media Centre calendar. Mm -hmm. It's up on Cyblogs as well. If you go to the Cyblogs homepage, uh, you can click on the Events tab, and that'll be right there. 
Other than that, we just need to finish off, as usual, by saying thanks to everyone who makes this possible. So thanks to Rhea and Sheehan for our um, outro themes, and thanks to you guys for listening. Yes. Indeed, please do get in touch with us. Sorry about anything, uh, any feedback, any comments, any questions, anything like that. Uh, failing which, we will be back next week. Indeed. Alrighty. Catch you guys then. Bye bye.